Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association's webinar series. Uh, today's educational webinar is on international market opportunities, understanding the UK, German, and Italian tourism markets. Good morning, my name is Bianca Mitchell. I am the education manager for IANTA. IANTA provides technical assistance and training to tribal nations and native owned enterprises engaged in tourism, hospitality, and recreation. Our mission is to define, introduce, grow, and sustain American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian tourism that honors traditions and values. This coming April 19th through the 20th will be our two day, sixth annual Go International Seminar which is designed to help indigenous tourism businesses build better travel packages. Expert speakers and hands-on presentations showcase how to build itineraries, how to attract domestic and international group travelers, and how to work with the global tour operators. This year's GO International will be held here in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the Indian Public Cultural Center. Registration is open and you can register at our website at ianta.org. Also next week on Monday, February 28th at 10 a.m. Mountain, our San Diego State University Certificate in Cultural Tourism and Tribal Enterprises Level 2 Information Session webinar will take place. In this Level 2 course, students will learn global best practices in the effective organization of native culture site, cultural sites, recreation and tourism programs, and leisure-related tribal businesses, including tribal gaming, native hospitality operations, and sacred sites. Again, visit our website at ayenta.org to learn more about our educational program offerings. As a reminder, please put your questions in the Q&A or the chat, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Again, thank you for joining us for today's webinar, International Market Opportunities, Understanding the UK, German, and Italian Tourism Markets. We're so excited to be partnering with the U.S. Commercial Services, and I'd like to introduce you to our moderator today, Karen Ballard, who is the International Trade Specialist with U.S. Commercial Services, Boise, Idaho. A little bit of background on Karen. Uh, she joined the Foreign Commercial Service in 2014 and was posted to the Las Vegas, Nevada, Sydney, Australia, and most recently, Buenos Aires, Argentina. She returned home to Idaho for a new position at the Idaho Export Assistance Center. Before joining the commercial services, Karen worked for the Idaho Department of Commerce for 20 years, first as an international tourism straight trade specialist, and then as the administrator of the Idaho Tourism and Film Office. Throughout her career, she has worked closely with Brand USA, IANTA, the U.S. Travel Association, and many federal agencies, including the U.S. Department of Commerce. At this time, Karen... Welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Bianca. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm an international trade specialist with the U.S. Commercial Service, now based in Boise, Idaho. Attracting international tourism to the United States is a passion of mine. And as you heard, prior to joining the Foreign Service, I was the Director of Tourism for the State of Idaho and a customer of the U.S. Commercial Service. I loved working with my local office director and her contacts overseas to raise awareness of our tourism offerings, which included the Nez Perce, Chauvin, and Coeur d'Alene tribal opportunities. Along with our international speakers, I am joined today by my colleagues, Elizabeth Krauth, Director of our North Bay San Rafael office, and Bernadette Rojas, director of our Fresno office. And of, we have several other of our organizations joining along to learn on this program as well. So if you are online and, and presentable, please show yourself and wave to the audience so they can see that we're here. In addition to these offices, we are located in every state with the exception of Wyoming being served by our Denver office. And we are in US embassies and consulates in nearly 75 countries. Our goal today is to inspire you to connect with your local office if you do not already know who that is. They are your conduit to our global network of trade professionals, three of whom you will hear from today. Every day, they help tourism businesses and destinations explore markets around the world. Our ultimate goal is to connect you with pre-screened, qualified potential business partners and vet international inquiries from sources not known to you that may seem interesting. 
I will put in the chat some links for some useful pages on our website to find your local office, as well as the travel and tourism research available to you. We offer complimentary export counseling, off-the-shelf market research, and commercial diplomacy. The U.S. government considers international visitor tourism to be an export of the U.S. So we are here to help you with best practices, getting paid, and high-value networking. For a modest fee, we can do customized research and business matchmaking to connect you with rewarding opportunities and relationships in your chosen markets. As you heard, we are part of the U.S. Department of Commerce and the International Trade Administration. It's our pleasure to be collaborating once again with IANTA, an important partner to us, and to bring you this first in a three-part series webinar. Today is about market opportunities and challenges in the UK, Germany, and Italian market. March 22nd will be about tips and tricks to globalize your website so that you are found by international travelers planning your trips, their trips. And actually, it's very helpful for getting better seen domestically. So it's a great opportunity to um, help enhance your website. And the next will be our What Next webinar on May 10th. It'll be a follow-up to IANTA's Go International, the in-person workshop that Bianca mentioned in Albuquerque. And that will be April 19th through the 20th. The webinar as the follow-up will be May 10th, as I mentioned, and that link will soon be on the IANTA website where you can register for the aforementioned activities uh, as well. So if you have any suggestions about what you would like for the May 10th webinar, because it is still being developed, we'd love to see uh, that in the chat as well. One of the best markets to start with is the United Kingdom. And to explain why, it is my pleasure to introduce our first presenter, Stephen Brown, commercial specialist, direct from the US Embassy in London. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Karen. And good evening to everybody. Welcome to the beautiful US Embassy here in the heart of London. Um, it's daylight here still, and you can see <clears throat> the buildings behind me. So um, without further ado, I, am, I would like to uh, present the UK presentation. I have lived and worked in the US for some 16 years and joined the commercial service recently. I have a 30 year background in the travel and tourism sector. So it's my pleasure to give you an overview on the UK market. Next slide, please, Bianca. So just as a kickoff, just so you know that we're all good friends here in Europe, this is a map to show uh, where we sit at the United Kingdom. Of course, we're here from our, our friends in Germany and Italy, but we are all one big happy family, even though um, I have to point out that the United Kingdom, as you probably know well know, decided to leave the European Union. And we did so on the 31st of December uh, 2020. And uh, here we are, um, uh, still friends with our neighbours. It doesn't affect much as far as travel and tourism goes much more on the on the good side and the uh, financial services side. So uh, on to the next slide please. So uh, to give you a little overview of the UK market here, we're going to touch on the economy here, the UK market, we're going to talk about the, U, uh, the UK traveller to the US, some of the things that influence our travellers, our, our citizens here to, to visit the US, um, then the UK tourism to the American Indian communities, um, just a touch on the travel restrictions, um, the UK distribution channels, which are very key for you to break into if you're not already familiar with them here. Booking trends for 2022, um, some recommendations for you how to sell in the UK market and some partnering and resource suggestions. Next slide, please. So um, it's important that you understand we are the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And I just wanted to, I always show this on my presentations. We are four nations under one flag, under one United Kingdom. That's England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. Our central government, as far as travel and tourism is concerned, controls and sets the regulations for everything. We have devolved governments in Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland, each with their own capitals of Cardiff, Edinburgh, and Belfast. And they also set some local rules uh, to do with education, health, um, and um, uh, housing and environmental opportunities, etc., and some local taxation. But overall, as far as you're concerned, we are the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Americans often refer to us as England, but that's one fourth of the, of the setup here. So um, just to give you an overview on that. Next slide, please. So the UK market, we're a population of just under 68 million. Um, we are the world's fifth largest economy. Uh, the second in Europe. Um, as I mentioned, we are no longer a member of the European Union, 
but that is, uh, as, but it does mean that we're free to uh, sign and negotiate our own free trade agreements with other countries around the world, whereas we were more constrained under the EU rules. Um, our government here did help uh, companies during the um, COVID with a, we've called it a government support scheme, uh, allowing people to work from home. They were paid 80% of their salaries. And this was across the board um, for two years. So the, the generally speaking, the, the, um, the businesses were helped financially um, by that. But by far, the impact has been greatest on the travel and tourism hospitality sector. Um, the UK economy is predicted to grow the fastest of the G7 countries um, in 2020. Too. So uh, we'll again have to see if that prediction uh, plays out. The WHO, for your information, has predicted that the UK could be the first country in the Northern Hemisphere to transition from pandemic to endemic. And if you're in London today, you'd think that things were all back to normal and there was no uh, what, what happened over the last two years. But there is a concern about cost of living um, here increases in, and I'm sure you're seeing the same in the US, uh, the rising inflation, new taxes we have. Uh, so this could affect the disposable income on uh, households. And of course, that ultimately affects what they do, whether they go out or go on vacation, etc. So this is a concern and uh, fuel prices here are skyrocketing. Okay, the next slide, please. So some of the um, for the UK uh, the UK traveller to the US the UK is a very mature and highly developed market and the travel and tourism sector is no exception. Um, travel and tourism has been sold and and in this market overseas for almost a hundred years. Um, the target market for the US uh, to go to the US is affluent families, young professionals, and the baby boomers, which we class as the fifty five plus. We we have four to five weeks leave annually. Uh, the peak travel for the family is late July to early September because that has to coincide with the school holidays. Um, with uh, no international travel over the last two years, people have saved lots of money. There's more money in, in savings accounts than there ever has been. And there is a pent up demand for travel internationally. We need to get off our island. Uh, independent, we're very much an independent traveller, we like city breaks, we like long haul fly drive tours, we experiential trips discovering America's history, so well, a lot of these things tick the boxes that you, you uh, many of you provide. Um, we are by far the largest um, international visitors to the US, and I'm quoting 2019 figures because 2021 figures are so distorted due to the pandemic. Almost 5 million UK visitors uh, visited the US in 2019. Um, this was compared with oh, just under half a million in 2021. So you can see how much we have dropped and fallen off. We've lost almost 4.2 million visitors, um, and it's the lowest in almost four decades. So we have a mountain to climb to get it back, but that turning point I think is here. 65 percent just over of our visitors from the UK to the US go on a leisure or vacation purpose in 2019 and we are an early booking market for the long-haul traveler which the US is considered. We often we most likely book three to six months in advance in some cases 12 months in advance so a family can save and plan um, and um, for the family packages, which of course are during the school holidays when prices are usually higher because of pent up or because of demand uh, drives up the, 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 the cost. The average stay of a UK visitor uh, for most of the longer trips, I'm not talking about a city break to New York or Boston or the West Coast, etc., is 14 nights. Um, Destination USA topped uh, the UK travelers' wish list in 2022 as a place to go. Um, and um, the key destinations, Florida, New York, Las Vegas, and California are the ones we're familiar with, and of course, uh, then expanding onto the uh, off-roads. The next slide, please. So what influences us to travel? Um, clearly, digital print, social media campaigns by airlines, tour operators, tourist boards, DMOs, destination management organizations, who communicate destination and product experiences. This is common in most of uh, Western Europe. We do have a very established newspaper section here on a weekend. We have uh, daily newspapers and then they come out at weekends with huge travel sections in them, which have uh, uh, major features and can influence travel. And of course, if you can get a, a, a journalist to feature a road trip and your product is in there, it can be really very beneficial. These are on Saturdays and Sundays and widely read. We have respected influences in the social media side of things. And of course, uh, they post from their travels. 
and some of these people have huge followings. So they are very much now a feature of our uh, promotion of destinations around the world, particularly the US. We're into experiential, cultural and sustainable elements are now very important and they should be, they're very much a consideration in the process um, for travelers um, when they are making a decision of where they're going to go if you meet those requirements. Ease of access has become more um, uh, prominent during the pandemic. People don't want to fly via, as in flying to New York, connecting and then flying on maybe to um, Denver or somewhere. They want to fly direct as much as possible to, uh, instead of um, touching other cities on the way. For obvious reasons, they just want to get there. They don't want to be in contact, keep their contact with others down to a minimum. And also what's included in the package is key. Um, uh, you know, there's high expectations on standards, um, high standards of service, and of course on safety, we're very much key on that. Next slide, please. So uh, regarding the American Indian communities, UK tourism in, two, again, 2019 figures I'm quoting here is 3.6%. So huge opportunities here, considering that 65% uh, of all UK visitors come on a, on a vacation, uh, visited Indian communities in 2019. On a general uh, outlook, when we look at what most of our, our, our visitors from the UK do when they visit the US in general, it's shopping, dining, sightseeing. Theme parks are very big. The Florida market is very, very uh, huge here. Uh, attractions and the national parks. And then if we look at what they do when they come to the American Indian communities, we're talking about sightseeing, shopping, cultural heritage sites, national parks and historic locations. So almost, some things mirrored, but also a much more of a feature on the cultural heritage and the, the historic side of things. Um, the visitors to the um, Indian community are more likely to be repeat visitors to the US, the second and third time, or even fourth, third and fourth time visitors. Usually our tick list is New York and Florida in our first two trips, and then we venture out to something uh, further afield. Um, cultural, uh, we're staying in a boutique, local uh, properties, bed and breakfast, authentic dining experiences. These are all a plus and what the visitor is looking for on these trips after, you know, the their third and fourth time when they're really venturing out to experience more of America. The UK um, traveler is comfortable renting a, a higher car and heading off and driving on a self tour program. And we call these fly drive programs and they are very popular here. The next slide, please. So I'm not going to dwell on this because I just really wanted to say the regulations here, we still have to test. This is a, a standard and my colleagues will repeat this. Anybody visiting the US has to test within um, 24 hours of departure. So that's a US government requirement. As far as the UK goes, we have removed all of our um, COVID restrictions. Our government announced that um, the final ones will go. So we are um, in the next two, two weeks, we are completely um, uh, free of all quarantining and um, et cetera. And when you come to the UK, you don't need to test. So we are really opening up fully now. There is just a little bit of confusion on the child situation in the US where various states and cities have different rules about children under, um, under the age of 12, if they can go in, if they're not vaccinated, et cetera. And that's just something we need to be aware of. But hopefully as we move through the year, these uh, restrictions also on the, from the US government side will disappear as well. Um, and then the consumer is looking to be flexible. Um, they want options and guarantees that if things change rapidly, they can get refunds and et cetera, uh, having had the last two years of experience of trying to get refunds and things. So that flexibility and guarantees on that are important. Next slide, please. So I wanted to take a minute on the distribution channel side of things. This is so important here. If you're going to break into our market, you can't do it alone. Um, yes, you can, you can try to, but the market is huge. Costs of advertising and everything are very expensive. And what you need to be looking at is how to partner. Now the consumer has a huge choice here. Obviously they can go direct to an airline. They can do their own hotel bookings and things, but most um, go in the middle option, which is the tour operators. And we have two types. We have the volume tour operator, that's predominantly driving business by large numbers of sales to New York, Florida, California, and Las Vegas. And those are all listed there. British Airways holidays and Virgin holidays are, are two big airlines here, have their own tour operation units, and they are huge in driving that sort of business. They are all available online to book, and um, they... That, they are very straightforward booking packages. However, we have a whole range of custom tailor-made, we call them tailor-made tour operators. This is some selection here, Trail Finders America as you like it, uh, American Sky, North American Travel Service. And these operators really specialize 
in those market segments, particularly the, um, the 55 plus, the young professionals who really want a custom made tour to fit their needs, to tick some boxes that they want to experience. And these smaller operators are much more open to work with off the beaten track or the unusual or the historic destinations, etc. And this is something where you should consider working with these people if you can, uh, these operators, and they're always visiting um, uh, IPW, uh, which we'll come to in a moment. So there's opportunities for you to build a relationship with them, um, uh, these uh, operators all have an online presence. They all sell through what we call agency chains. These are high street uh, travel agencies who are on our, we have a high street uh, rather than a strip mall or shopping mall mentality here or set up in our towns and cities across the UK. And these bar head is actually an, owned by an American company, um, uh, travel leaders, Hayes Travel, these are huge networks and probably have about two or 300 branches around the country. And there is more of a drive for people to walk into these uh, tour aid, travel agencies and book their holidays because it's protected. They can talk it through. They see the person they're booking with, particularly more now the pandemic uh, has driven this because they want assurances about the refund and the guarantees. I should say that all our operators have to operate under our civil aviation authority with an ATOL license, which allows them to, to trade so that everything is protected and the, the, the consumer is definitely wants to book with a protected agency after what's happened during the pandemic. The map of the UK on the other side, for your information, shows our main cities of connecting points. This is, of course, where we have direct flights from London, Manchester, Glasgow and Edinburgh and then Belfast in Northern Ireland. And I've also shown Dublin because obviously um, the Irish market, some people can fly via Dublin to head to the US. These are, during the pandemic, before the pandemic, we had uh, many flights from all of these cities. During the last two years, we only had connections to the US with two or three flights a week from London Heathrow. So you can imagine what it's done to connectivity and airline capacity. But slowly we're seeing that change and Edinburgh and Glasgow are opening up and uh, Manchester as well. So this is good news. Next slide, please. Um, this is a, a bar chart of our booking trends for this year. This was done as a recent survey back in January of about 2000 people. I, the, the, what I want to draw your attention to our normal booking month in this country is January for long haul trips. As soon as Christmas is over, everybody books. And then if you, but you look at this, this is what the pandemic has done. January, 3%, February, 8%. And what you're seeing is a sliding uh, scale here of, of people pushing their commitments to book a long haul trip. That's, you know, outside the Europe, outside the Europe area. Um, into late April or March, late April. And that really adds up to almost 30 plus percent if you take those two. And we have a whopping 36% uh, who haven't decided if they're taking us on holiday or going or don't know it yet. And this is obviously as a result, we would have seen this turned upside down and everything would have been booked in January and February if it was a normal period of a normal cycle. So things, people are adapting. There's gonna be some late booking for this year. And then, of course, what we're doing is moving into hopefully see some return to the normal cycle in 20, uh, 2023. The next slide, please. So some recommendations for you when you want to break into this market. It is so important that you work with a receptive. Many of these tour operators, as I've shown you, haven't got time to sign individual contracts with you all. They go to a bed, a bed provider, a hotel club, or a, um, a receptive tour operator where they can see what they have got and sign a contract with them. It lowers their um, administration and allows them to, to offer a wider range of product. And that's key. Um, there are some well-established ticket providers in the UK market, Attraction World uh, Attraction Tickets Direct. So if you're just selling an experiential experience, whether it's a meal in a restaurant or a, a visit to a park or a visit to a museum, these tickets could be, you could negotiate with them to sell your tickets through, through these attraction providers. Um, we have also um, partnerships with custom made tour operators where you need to build an independent fly driver on escorted tour and that's important that you develop this so that, that you need to sit down with them and say okay what are your uh, clients looking for can we incorporate our uh, product or destination or our museum or our hotel or our casino into your product and that's what they need to hear from you how they can develop that and they will write some custom itineraries for your needs 
Uh, availability is key. They need uh, no blackout dates. We need instant confirmation. They can't be waiting two or three days to say, is that hotel confirmed? Is that meal in this restaurant confirmed? Tour operators will want preferential rates, often net rates if you can, if you prefer, which uh, if you give them preferential rates, you have to bear in mind that you need to be able to pay a commission through the channels because everybody marks it up along the way. Um, one of the things you should definitely look at is co-op marketing opportunities via partnerships with your state regional tourism organizations, our brand USA, um, or uh, our tour operator directly. This, we're ensuring, of course, you have uh, ROI on your investment, but many state tourist boards, many regional tourist boards have representation here in the UK market. In fact, just about all of America is represented here through uh, representation in the agencies and PR agencies. So important to look at those opportunities in your local area, California, Arizona, et cetera, New York, Florida, what, what are they doing in market in the UK that I can co-op with them and, and save myself a lot of cost, but ride on their coattails. Tour operators will require you to meet uh, very stringent health and safety regulations. They will need you to do risk assessments. This is required by UK law. So, and be supportive of clients you know, if there's an emergency while they're with you or visiting you, etc. And use every opportunity to network and develop relationships with these key tour operators that I mentioned, particularly in the boutique and tailor-made section. Um, and then I think we go to the last slide, please. And this is partnering and resourcing. So we have a Visit USA Association. It's one of the oldest in the world. It's huge here. It's very well established. It's the best six bank for your buck, a best investment of $650 if you, if you wish to become a member. They allow members on both sides of the Atlantic. They produce amazing travel planner every year. And it really is a B2B and a B2C engagement opportunity. And uh, highly recommend you look into that. And I've shared their, their website, Travel Planner, here. And um, I'd be happy to, if anybody has any questions, to follow up and give you the contacts there. But really have a look at this Travel Planner and see if you were a member how you would be featured in there. And this is distributed to the UK traveller um, and also to the tour operators and to the uh, travel agents who are selling the US. Brent? No, Brand US. Can we go? Back? Brand USA. I won't say much about that because it's a, it's, it's it's it is what it, it's it's the US government uh, tourist authority. It's a pay to play. Uh, they do have a, uh, when I say pay to play, if you want to join in their co-op marketing programs, they do have um, a Brand USA Travel Europe workshop. It was held here in London. Next year it goes to, this year it goes to Frankfurt. And this is an ideal opportunity for smaller destinations who can't afford the big shows to come and have a three-day appointment meetings with key operators and buyers in the market. And again, as I mentioned, state, regional and city tourist offices uh, have all market have, have all appointed representation agencies in the UK market and you should look at the marketing and PR activities that they're doing for the UK and Irish markets that you could join. Getting a journalist into your market, having them right up in the newspaper here can be uh, invaluable. And finally, the UK delegation uh, at IPW is uh, the buyers and media is one of the largest uh, each attending each year. Great presents a great opportunity for you to network with them. And I highly recommend that if you can attend IPW, you use that opportunity to, to, to strengthen your relationships. And the last slide is my, con my con uh, how you can reach me and um, I'll be happy to help all of you grow your business as much as I can here. Thank you very much. And now I pass over to my good colleague and wonderful uh, lady in uh, the German market. She's the authority on travel and tourism here in Europe and uh, uh, has been doing this a lot longer than me. But um, uh, so I hand over to Elizabeth Walsh in, in, uh, in Frankfurt. Elizabeth, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Stephen. Thank you, Karen and Bianca. And um, good morning to everybody who's in the morning. It's the evening time here in Germany. So I say, guten Abend, guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Uh, you can tell from my accent that I'm not originally German, but I have been here for a couple of decades and I'm very proud to have been working with Ayanta uh, from the beginning, Germany being one of the key markets. Um, so moving along to the first slide, um, I am going to share with you as much as I can in the time given on the German economy, the German traveler, 
the German visitor to Indian country. Um, I'm going to mention the America Journal, which is a beautiful publication, um, which has also been a member of AENTA for many years um, and who's, who's partnering with me on this presentation for the German market. I will mention travel restrictions because, as Karen said, we're talking about challenges as well as opportunities for the German market here. Um, and um, then I'll talk briefly about the booking pattern, which is very similar, uh, not identical to the UK market, which was already mentioned um, by Stephen. Um, packaging recommendations and some resources for you. So next slide, please, Bianca. Germany um, in the middle of Europe is uh, with a population of 83 plus million people. Um, and you may have heard about a million of those have been refugees over the last number of years. Uh, it's the world's fourth largest economy uh, behind the US, China and Japan and accounted for a quarter of the European Union's gross domestic product in 2019. Um, the uh, United States is, uh, uh, Germany is the, the largest uh, trading partner and the fifth largest market for US exports. Germany is the largest consumer market in the European Union um, and a very large volume of trade in Germany is done at trade shows. So some of you may have heard or even attended the ITB, the Internationale Tourismusbörse in Berlin, which is uh, a major way of doing business, but there are other trade shows uh, also for, for doing business. And um, the volume of trade and the number of consumers in Germany's geographic location makes it um, a cornerstone for a lot of US uh, organizations um, to build their, their expansion um, platforms on. So we have a lot of US companies based here in uh, Germany. So business travel is also uh, popular. Um, we have, uh, uh, the German government has got um, support for businesses and the pandemic support has just been extended to uh, June uh, 2022, which is going beyond the two year mark. Um, our, um, Short work uh, payment is not as generous as the UK. Our workers only receive 60%, not 80%. Um, but it is a great way for the travel agents to uh, stay above water. Um, our travel industry has been incredibly resilient and resourceful here in Germany um, on staying in business and, and keeping afloat doing all sorts of alternative things. Um, in the meantime, the Omicron variant is still cause for uncertainty, particularly with travel bookings, and I'll get to that later. And um, I specifically asked my intern just to give you an idea on the size of Germany. It's slightly bigger than New Mexico, it's slightly smaller than Montana, um, for those of you who want to know. Next slide, please. Okay, so German travelers, um, are generally um, of high income and with lots of vacation days, 24 plus days. Um, we are in an enviable position, uh, some of us having 30 days of, of holidays and um, with the financial means to travel. Um, nonetheless, um, Germans will still look for value for money. Um, so um, they can book through discount websites um, and are actively comparing prices. Um, the United States is the number one long haul destination of choice for German tourists. Um, and the average length of stay in the US is 18 nights. So that's four more than the UK, um, but that's probably because we have more vacation uh, time than the UK. Um, I speak not just um, for Germany, uh, but also when uh, you look at the German speaking markets, which a lot of our destination rep agents do, uh, it's Germany, Austria and Switzerland together. They accounted for around uh, two and a half million visitors to the United States per annum. That was um, before COVID. Um, Germany had more than two million visitors um, and 62% of those visit for vacation or leisure purposes. So um, they're very interested in shopping, national parks, cultural tourism, Native American outdoor activities, uh, fine dining. Um, they are environmentally conscious, um, risk averse. And I just wanted to say cash is king. Um, Germans don't pay with credit cards in Germany. When they go to the US, they do, of course, they bring their credit cards, um, they will have a credit card, but it's not the way of uh, the method of payment of choice. Um, and that can influence how they want to pay. So some of them may like to pay cash. Next slide, please. 
Thank you. So how would you appeal to German visitors? Um, digital media is very important uh, to communicate product details and share experiences. Um, so, you know, the the millennials who are digital natives um, are all into social media, and that is a really great way of being found, especially if you are um, a smaller attraction or an experience or a destination or a, an accommodation without uh, a major international marketing budget. Um, you can put cool experiences and stories um, on social media and get seen. Um, themes um, to attract the German visitor is off the beaten track, remote travel destinations. Um, you know, the more remote it is and the fewer Germans have been there before, the happier the German visitor is going to be to have found it. Um, natural beauty is, uh, is and open spaces are a great selling point. Um, in the post-COVID world, this is even going to be more important than ever. Um, German travelers want to know all of the details. Um, they want to know all of the nitty gritty. Um, so give them, give them the lowdown, give them the skinny. Um, you know, right down to um, this is how we would like you to tip because in Germany we don't tip. So the tipping, you know, the percentage, whatever percentage, put it on your menus um, or you know, put a polite reference to it somewhere in your small print so that they get it. Um, and um, you know any optional add-ins that you've got, great. Put them all in there. Thank you. Next slide, please. I want to talk a little bit about um, Germans' uh, travel intentions. Um, this is um, already uh, one year old. This information, um, IPK releases that information. This information at ITB every year. We didn't have an ITB in. Uh, 2021, um, a lot of our trade shows were, were cancelled, and all of our trade shows were cancelled in Germany. And as I said, that's the way we do a lot of our business. Um, but nonetheless, this information um, has been made available. Um, so holiday trips, uh, really, Germans consider vacation to be um, a right rather than a privilege. So everybody is booking. Everybody is booking a little bit shorter notice, but sun and beach holidays, extremely popular. City trips, um, half of people want to do city trips. And um, tour holidays, 50-seater coach, not so popular anymore. Maybe, you know, eight to 12 people on a, on a, a minivan tour um, is more, more COVID confirmed. So I'm going to just leave that with you. Um, to say that Germans are, are back to booking again. Next slide, please. Now, regarding Indian country, um, German visitors love to visit Indian country. And this is um, proven in the um, American Indian communities uh, profile provided by our colleagues from the National Travel and Tourism Office. 4%, 4.4% of all German visitors visited um, uh, Indian country um, on their trips. And um, they are more likely to be repeat visitors, um, experienced travelers, and familiar with the United States, um, open to new experiences, and possibly readers of the America Journal. Next slide, please. I put in a lot of extra statistics in the notes so you can all read them. Um, one of the things that Stephen mentioned was getting media coverage as a very effective way of creating market demand and getting awareness for your tourism product. Um, and um, one of the ways to do this is to partner with a publication. The America Journal is um, a great partner for U.S. destinations um, and U.S. tourism uh, suppliers and is also a member of um, AENTA. Um, and that's why I just wanted to show you they have a beautiful um, multi-page article on uh, Native American cultural centers um, in the in the United States. Um, they're doing a new feature um, on Native American culture on March 25th. And if you would like a copy of uh, the America Journal, please email deadleftfox at comcast.net. Um, they have um, four uh, editions a year during Corona times, and they have a, um, a, circula a circulation of uh, uh, 35 and a half thousand is the distribution, readership of 130,000, um, and their readers are uh, experts. Elizabeth, you've gone on mute. 
the ad in the magazine um, electronically. Um, so much uh, for the, um, uh, the, the advertising. Um, it's a beautiful publication and a wonderful way to access um, the German consumers. There are other publications too, and, um, and they are all invited to IPW, for example. So I just want to go to the next slide, please. Um, one of the uh, things that the American Journal did was a survey during Corona times asking their readers in particular, how will your travel behavior change? Um, and these are Germans who would travel normal times, maybe three times a year to the United States um, just for leisure. So I'm um, mindful of time. I just want to say that German travelers tend will plan to be more mindful about and during their trips. Um, they'll be less focused on city trips uh, for obvious reasons. They'd like to experience as much as possible. So self-drive tours are always popular with Germans um, and, and stay for longer, but have less trips. And when thinking about the United States, they want to do landscapes, um, highways and byways, American culture, um, lifestyle uh, and landscapes of the Southwest, charm of the Rockies, um, wild open spaces. That's just to give you an idea. I'm going to move along quickly now. <laughs> Next slide, please, Bianca. Um, Travel regulations are changing. Germans need to be vaccinated to get into the United States. Um, we have to complete an attestation form to get on the plane. Um, or we have some issues, as Stephen mentioned, for the UK market, also for the German market. Um, children need to be vaccinated generally. Um, but if they're not vaccinated, they don't need to quarantine unless they test positive afterwards. So flexibility with bookings is very important. I'm going to ask to move on to the next slide. Uh, Germans tend to book through, sorry, that's my alarm, tend to book through the um, uh, tour operators uh, because, again, they're protected. If the tour operator goes bust, then they get their money back. So that's very important. No. Um, we have a lot of uh, travel agents in Germany and um, people will either book through travel agency or internet, but they, that could be a tour operator on the internet or a travel agent on the internet. So um, there's a preference of younger people to, to book online. Um, older people will, will book more offline. Um, and the statistics are um, available in the, the notes on my slides. But I just wanted you to know that uh, because German tour operators uh, are bonded, they, they're the best uh, bet for long haul travel. So the next slide goes into more detail. Next slide, please. Um, we did have 10,000 travel agents. Um, some of them are still in business. So most of them, we hope, are still in business. Uh, we don't know yet. Um, and tour operator packages is how the German market does it, just like the UK, as Stephen said. Um, and uh, we have uh, specialist tour operators in Germany uh, who uh, do boutique customized packages to the United States. And we have the volume tour operators as well, who Stephen mentioned. Access is also key. Um, we have um, a lot of new nonstop transatlantic flight connections, which we're delighted about. And um, I provided a, an overview of those to Bianca to share with all registrants for this webinar afterwards, uh, along with our presentation. Next slide, please. Um, so when it comes to packaging for the German market, um, just like in the UK, probably also in Italy, the German tour operators will expect preferential rates and top commissions, no blackout dates, um, because that's quite difficult for them to accommodate in their booking systems. Um, they will expect immediate confirmations and uh, a local point of contact um, for uh, their clients in case of emergencies. Um, and what do you get for that? Um, well, the tour operators will package and promote your product through their channels. Um, they'll counsel clients on what it is you have to offer. Um, they'll create consumer awareness and um, make your product bookable uh, by including it in incorporating it into their customized packages. Um, they also provide you with an opportunity to advertise with them. And this is called marketing support. Um, so make sure that you ask for statistics for your return on the investment. Um, there are a number of receptive tour operators who package from the German market who are specific to packaging for the German market. And I've added those into the notes of this slide, which is my second last one, um, just in case you're keen to know who those partners are. Next slide, please. 
resources. Um, there are many uh, for you to continue to uh, learn more about the German market for travel and tourism. I'll just mention a few. Um, Reise for Neun is a newsletter um, which is free of charge and you can get it daily if you speak German. Um, into your inbox. Um, Deutsche Welle is actually a German government subsidized, um, uh, so like public broadcasting um, for German news um, in English. Uh, the FVW is Germany's largest travel trade magazine, um, and they do have an English section as well, um, a, con a condensed uh, news from the German travel trade, um, which is a subscription-based publication. Um, the US Commercial Service in Germany, who I work with, um, uh, provides market information. The National Travel and Tourism Office has provided a number of these statistics that I've shared with you today and noted in uh, my presentation. Um, your US Export Assistance Center finder um, to uh, connect with your local uh, commercial uh, trade specialists um, in your locality, uh, who many of whom are, are here on the call today. And our Visit USA Committee Germany, um, which is also a membership-based uh, association like in the UK. I haven't also mentioned that we have Brand USA office here as well. They report through the UK office um, to headquarters just uh, for information. So last slide, thank you very much for your attention. I apologize, I've gone a little bit over time. And um, uh, if you have any further questions, please uh, feel free to contact me um, through your uh, local uh, specialist. It is now my pleasure to say thank you very much, Herzlichen Dank, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Luisa Salomoni, in the commercial service in Italy. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for your kind introduction. Thank you, Bianca and Karen and everyone that is joining this, uh, this webinar. Um, as uh, was uh, said at the beginning, I'm a commercial specialist in uh, Milan, uh, Italy, that I joined more than 30 years uh, now. So next uh, slide, please. I would like to give a, a small introduction to the Italian market, just a quick overview on uh, the economy and the population, uh, the profile of the traveler, the, um, the choice that travelers do, and uh, the visit to the Native American destination. Next slide, please. Okay, Italy is a peninsula. Uh, is uh, located in the southern central uh, Europe uh, with a population of almost 60 million uh, uh, people, approximately the equivalent of the total population of California and Texas together, just to give you uh, an idea. They are, um, I mean, the population is fairly even uh, distributed um, with more attraction in the coastal area on the uh, biggest, uh, the longest uh, river that we have in Italy, um, Po River, so in that, in its valley. And of course, in the urban centers, the, the biggest cities are Rome, and the second one is Milan, followed by Turin, Naples, and other. But let's say that the biggest are the political capital, Rome, and the economical capital, that is Milan. In 2020, Italy was the fifth largest European market for US export, mainly in the chemical sector, oil and gas, transportation, primary metal manufacturing, and computer and electronic uh, uh, products. In the more, more, more um, large environments in the world, uh, it was, it's the sixth largest manufacturing country, second to Germany, of course. Main products include uh, machinery, vehicles, pharmaceutical uh, furniture, and food. In fact, Italy is the world's largest uh, wine producer and clothing. So fashion uh, uh, is, uh, of course, uh, part of our production and Milan is the, the capital of, uh, of fashion. So city good for shopping. Starting from February 2020, it was the first country um, of Europe to be severely affected by COVID and uh, um, followed by all the other European uh, countries. Of course, the economy of our country was suffered, I mean, suffered a lot. And uh, uh, there is, I mean, there is the following or is lockdown increase this uh, uh, crisis, the crisis, the common little by little we are uh, uh, resolving. Next slide, please. Okay, the long haul travel uh, uh, don't necessarily follow this schedule that I put in, uh, in on screen, but this just gives you an idea on how the Italian travelers 
mainly book through which tools. Travel uh, agency and internet are more or less the same uh, uh, level, same percentage. Of course, young people, the so-called millennials, are more uh, user-friendly with the technology, the digital, uh, so the online booking, while senior prefer to use the old system, so go through the tour operators or travel agents. They feel more secure in, in, in booking through them. Um, Travelers mainly, are mainly from the urban uh, uh, area, so the, the, the cities, uh, with medium and uh, uh, high social uh, cultural profile. They prefer the um, organized tour, possibly with an Italian speaking guide. They feel, as, again, more, more secure, since uh, in some cases, especially for the senior, the English uh, language is not so well known. So they they, they are afraid to, to, to go in trouble if they travel in a country where they don't speak the same language. Of course, non-stop travels uh, or flights uh, are uh, preferred. Next slide, please. According to the latest statistics from the National uh, uh, Travel and Tourism Office, the NTTO, Arrival from uh, Italy in uh, uh, the United States compared to 2019 were down, I mean, dropped down uh, a lot. Again, in 2020. So in 2019, uh, we had 87% uh, down, and in 20, compared to the uh, 21, we had 90.6% down. The situation uh, uh, is a little bit improving, so the numbers are little by little increasing. Thanks also to the fact that uh, uh, most of the population, Italian population, is vaccinated, and we are we have a little bit of uh, more of freedom in moving and going around. Uh, so some restrictions have been uh, uh, removed. Um, it, Italian travelers, uh, again, like UK travelers and uh, German travelers, uh, needs to follow the CDC guidance. So they need to be fully vaccinated. They need to get a test prior to board into, into an, air, an airplane and uh, follow the, the, the guidance of the, the United States uh, that, I mean, if there are updates. The vaccination rate in Italy is pretty high. We have 89.03% of the population fully vaccinated. These are the numbers that I uh, pulled down from the, the, the government website today. Next slide, please. So uh, Italians uh, like uh, uh, travel, so vacation, food and shopping. So they tend to save the money to spend money for the good uh, for a good vacation, to experience a good vacation, to spend a good time with uh, the family, with the, the, the friends, uh, with the uh, companion, with everyone, but, or even by by themselves. Um, the, the vacations are mainly concentrated uh, during the national public uh, holidays, even if uh, Italians have quite a good number of uh, um, day off. Uh, in the, the average is 20, between 24 and, and 30, depending on the, on the sector. Still, they prefer to travel during the public uh, holidays or uh, even better during the, the summertime, when also the school are closed. So having the school closed, of course, family especially, have more freedom in, in going around and spend more time outside of their own uh, uh, country or city. Mm, in most of the cases, Italian travelers are not uh, um, people that plan a lot in advance, especially young people are last uh, bookers because in this way they hope or they, they see more um, more convenient uh, opportunities. So get discounted uh, travel, discounted packages, or just discover something that maybe at that, until that time they didn't think about it. So they, they prefer to, to wait in some cases. Uh, they are big spenders. So when they, they go on vacation, they like to enjoy the vacation 100%. So they like to spend, to do shopping, to buy souvenirs, uh, art craft, uh, local products, uh, uh, sightseeing. Uh, really, they, they really would like to, to enjoy the, the time that they're spending in a different countries compared to, to their country. And US, of course, is uh, the first long haul destination as for 
uh, most of the um, my colleague in in, uh, in Europe. Next slide, please. Uh, the average length of the trip uh, is uh, between one or two two weeks, depending uh, um, how many people are traveling from families. Is a very, I mean, in some cases, a big cost. How to attract Italian visitors to a destination, so to, to the US, to the Native American destination, to a, a particular uh, location. Uh, they like uh, clean, uh, of course, clean spaces. Um, they, uh, they, 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 they are afraid about uh, infections. Uh, they like the social distancing, even if in some cases, especially in, probably in, in our own country, they don't respect it so, so much. Uh, Italian tour operators, as for German and UK, would like to receive uh, preferred uh, rates, um, uh, clear information, uh, a good uh, um, package, uh, immediate confirmation. As for uh, you, as you have heard from uh, from Elizabeth, Elizabeth in the, the German market, what they like: uh, uh, natural uh, beauties, uh, open spaces, uh, especially after two years of lockdown. Uh, People don't like to stay in closed uh, uh, spaces. They like to be part of the nature, be uh, breathe uh, air, pure air, not uh, uh, air conditioning or uh, risk to, to take something uh, in COVID or not COVID infection, whatever, being in a big city or in a big building. Um, basically, they like... Um, to travel in non-usual or unusual locations. So discover something different from the usual location that might be Miami or Los Angeles, New York. So they all, most of them, they already, already traveled in these locations. And of course they go, but as a spin-off, they want to travel in a different place, completely new, completely uh, different from a big, uh, big city. Next uh, slide, please. The tour operators are uh, always and uh, it will be always the good uh, supporting tool to promote uh, your uh, product, service, destination, um, hotels, uh, uh, whatever. So more details you provide to the tour operators, uh, more support you have from them. I know that in Italy there are uh, um, a couple of tour operators that are already in contact with the IANTA or their members in, and they promote the, the packages uh, from the Native American destinations. And they are, I mean, they are always, uh, they, they've been always good uh, uh, partnership um, between the two. Uh, the clean, uh, as I said, is very important. The food uh, is also important. They like to taste the new uh, taste, excuse me, the, <laughs> the repetition, but, uh, um, not uh, too, too fancy, I mean. Uh, of course, Italians are pasta lovers, as everyone knows. So don't, don't provide them a piatto of pasta, plate of pasta, because it's not what they want. So they want to, to taste the nature, they want to taste the destination, but also the food that is part of that, the, that destination. Without exaggeration, exaggeration. They don't like ice and beverage. I mean, the, the beverages usually in the U.S. are already very cold and adding ice for most of the people is not uh, a, a good choice. Uh, they like to be in hotels, in resort, uh, bungalow, uh, cabins. It depends on the age. As I said, senior probably prefer to have a more comfortable package, while millennial would like to try some uh, um, something more adventure, more uh, uh, iconic of the destination that they are uh, uh, visiting. Next slide, please. Um, according again to the Italian market profile uh, uh, prepared by the, the NTTO, the National Travel and Tourism Office, uh, in 2019, the 6.5% of the Italian uh, uh, tourists visited the American native, uh, um, the American Indian communities. So as part of their package of their travel to the United States, uh, they decided also to visit the um, American Indian communities. 
Mm, they are attracted uh, by the nature, by the mm, different uh, activities that they, you can uh, provide, and as I said, by the big spaces that you can offer. Personally, I work with uh, Ayanta since uh, 2015. Uh, we always uh, partnership uh, in, uh, uh, in the two fun tours, three fun tours, sorry, in uh, 18, uh, 17, 18, and 19 uh, with tour operators, Italian tour operators, and Italian media. We hope to repeat the same experience uh, just to improve and increase the presence of the native. Uh, American destination in the Italian market, especially with the media, because when they come back, they always uh, write good articles uh, about what they experience and what they have seen. Next slide, please. The trade opportunities, as uh, you probably, as you already heard from Germany and UK, the research, market research that uh, the US Department of Commerce can provide you or the NTTO, Business counseling that we can provide overseas or domestically through the EUSIAC offices. And Karen explained at the very beginning of this, uh, this webinar. Webinars, I mean, you can, uh, we can or you uh, can organize with our partner, like for example, the VTPSA webinars to let, uh, uh, let know that the, the tour operators, Italian tour operators, about new opportunities, new products, or new destinations that at the moment are not very well known in, in Italy. Matchmaking, we can uh, uh, connect you with the, the tour operators in a certain area if you want. So we can create uh, a particular uh, events uh, for you or a B2B uh, moment uh, together with, uh, with the, the USIAC, together with the US Department of Commerce and trade events. In Italy, we have three trade events in three different time, times of the, of the year. Uh, usually, BIT is the first one in the year and is always held uh, in February. Due to the pandemic, uh, the BIT uh, organizer decided to postpone the event uh, from, a from February to, to April. Also, uh, our event, Showcase USA Italy, that is uh, an event that is uh, organized in collaboration with the Visit USA Association in, in Italy, has been postponed. We decided to move from March before ITB to April before BIT, and we hope to be able to run it because we are still in a, in a silly situation. And TTG is the last one in, in, um, in this year. Then there are trade mission, and as I said before, farm tours. I had the pleasure to be part of three farm tours, and I'm very, very happy to uh, the, this opportunity to experience the, um, the, the hospitality of the Native American destinations and community. Next slide, please. Here you have some information about Showcase USA Italy, the annual event that we always organize together with the Visit USA Association. It's a matchmaking and sort of speed date uh, that we have, uh, we propose you, we propose you um, with the tour operator, Italian tour operators and, and media. In one day and a half, you can meet uh, the, the most, uh, um, not important, but probably the biggest tour operators and trade media in the Italian market. And you can uh, create new partnership, new business collaboration. Next slide, please. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, we have the Visit USA Association Italy. That is a very uh, active association in the Italian market uh, and their scope, their purpose is to promote the US as destination uh, through the Italian Tourists. They have a, a rich calendar of webinars, so you can get in contact with them and uh, uh, do a webinar with, with them or other uh, activities, uh, customized acti activities in, in general. So you have the information of the, um, the VD2SA secretary. Next slide and last, thank you. You have the resources. So Italian market information, we can provide you or the NTTO. Uh, the UX Export Assistance Center and the Visit USA Association. That's uh, all for me. Uh, so next, uh, in the next slide, you can see my contact. I thank you very much for your uh, uh, patience and for being uh, with us today. Thanks. Thank you so much, Louisa. That was marvelous as well. Elizabeth and Stephen really appreciate it. We have a really 
great question here uh, that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we have an attendee who is curious about which country may have travelers who are okay with rustic and glamping teepee stays in historical off the beaten locations. And I would imagine all of you actually have those clients, but it's a really astute question because you do need to find the right people to get you connected to them. So I turn it over to the panel to jump in. So. Well, maybe I'll, I, I would say here in this market, um, a two night stay perhaps in that type of environment, uh, you wouldn't want, I don't think a UK visitor would want to spend <laughs> um with all due respect uh length of period but they would love to experience the authenticness of it i would say that this would have probably appeal more to the younger crowd more to the um uh, young professionals who, who are, are more um shall we say uh adverse to sleeping in more rustic conditions than maybe the older generation um but uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, definitely something that would definitely appeal to the young professionals on a fly drive program because it really adds to the authenticity and experiencing something very different. And if you, if you, it's a bit like going to sleep in the ice hotel in Sweden. Uh, for all of you who don't know this, there's a hotel in Sweden that um, is made of ice, and um, it's a great big. It's a great part of a Swedish program up to Swedish Lapland to stay in this hotel for a night or two you have lovely warm weather in most of your locations and you couldn't really spend more than a night in a nice hotel because it's too cold but i think they would love to do that in our market yes for the right audience karen can you hear me yep okay great thanks Stephen. um i'd like to speak for the german market and say um that it's very much about personal experiences so um you know you wouldn't be going for one of the major tour operators who do volume packages you'd be looking for one of the boutique tour operators and immediately come to mind several of our tour operator partners who um for example umfulana they do cultural experience tours um to african tribes to Asian nations um, and also to Native Americans. And they have done, they, I've had inquiries from them about stays in Hogan's, for example. So um, they would definitely be an immediate target audience who comes to mind. Um, it's a boutique tour operator who do cultural in-depth uh, tours. They're a small boutique operator um, operating on a global basis out of Germany. Um, another uh, tour operator in Germany who I'd like to mention because I know that they already have glamping, but high-end glamping in their program um, is Canusa. This is um, one of our um, top boutique tour operators. Um, Tilo Prasaduno, who owns the company, has also served on the board of our Visit USA committee in a voluntary capacity for uh, as long as, nearly as long as I've been around. Um, you know, so take a look at the Canusa product um, and bear in mind that um, what you're offering, um, so long as you describe it honestly, um, it's okay if it's rustic, so long as there's uh, an opportunity to experience your culture in, in an honest way. Um, there are other tour operators um, who might also be uh, interested. I second Stephen's um, uh, comment about it's it's exclusive, it's exotic, it's maybe a one or two night thing, not something you do for 14 nights, um, but it's certainly an experience to be shared. And remember the social media connections, um, you know, you don't want to be overrun with people, but if, if people share that um, great experience with their friends, then maybe their friends will come back to you and book with you. So we, it, one of the things that we can do on an individual basis is help with identifying partners um, and setting up appointments for you with those partners. And that's one of our pay to play fee based services. We'd be happy to discuss that further. Thank you. Louisa, do you have anything to add? Not so much. I mean, more okay. or less, uh, I would repeat uh, what Elizabeth and Stephen yeah. just said. I mean, we, had in Italy, we have in Italy, as I said during my presentation, uh, a couple of uh, tour operators uh, that are, uh, uh, I mean, promoting this, uh, this, uh, this world. And uh, as Ms. Elizabeth said, social media are very important. And also it's very important to, to, to let the media part uh, uh, involved in the process. 
because uh, more you let them know, more they can produce in terms of articles or social media printed articles or online articles that could influence the, the people, the Italian people. Excellent. Thank you. And again, this is an opportunity for your local office to help you connect with the markets to find out who these specialized boutique operators are because they do exist. And we do have receptive operators in the United States who do very well with helping out um, uh, identify these types. And then uh, we had another question that uh, I want to pose to the panelists, starting with Elizabeth, having to do with vaccination status and apps and things like that for uh, those that are able to travel uh, to Europe and to your markets for your marketplaces. Uh, what do you anticipate will be happening and developing as it relates to showing proof of vaccination and the QR codes to get into activities and events overseas as they are conducting business in your countries? Let's start with Elizabeth and then go to Stephen. Absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks for that question, Fred. We look forward to welcoming you back to the European markets that we represent. Um, there, I've just posted a, a link in the chat, uh, which is the Robert Koch Institute, which is uh, the German uh, uh, organization which has been tasked with tracking COVID the last two years. And they have in English on their website uh, all of the requirements and regulations up to date. Um, on, on what you're going to need to come in. So you can look at that link that I've sent you now and see what the regulations are today. Um, you should also review it again before you plan your travel. Um, and just a, an anecdote, our intern was comparing that site to the German government uh, website, the, the German uh, uh, government department uh, responsible for uh, people coming into the country and found a mistake in the German government website and phoned them up and said, your information doesn't tally with the Robert Koch Institute. Can you explain to me? What's the story? He got the German government to change their website <laughs> to, to match up with the RKI. So um, you will be able to download a form that you have to fill in when you come. Um, and, and that is registering in uh, your arrival into Germany. And you have to declare what your vaccination status is in that. And um, you have to provide them with a telephone number um, so that they can track you if they want to. And I have done that because I, I went on vacation last summer and I came back every week um, on my Irish cell phone number. I am getting a message. Welcome to Germany. Please make sure you quarantine. <laughs> um, so I don't know how to turn it off. Um, you, uh, for getting into uh, restaurants and everything, we all have um, digital COVID certificates. And uh, if you have proof of vaccination, um, you know, your, your CDC card or whatever your proof of vaccination is, uh, you can uh, uh, get the digital certificate and, and download it and have it on your uh on your phone, on your iPhone. Um, I got mine at the at the chemist at the, the drugstore, um, the pharmacy apotheca. Um, so I can I can look into that for you um, just to make sure that that's possible if you don't have a registered address in Germany. But um, it's pretty easy. You just print out the barcode and uh, the, the, the QR code and they scan it everywhere you go. It's a, it's a GDPR thing. It protects your personal information. That's it for Germany. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Elizabeth. For the UK, it's very straightforward. Um, all of our entry requirements were removed on the 11th of February. So no pre-testing, um, uh, no testing on arrival. And our government today announced the, or yesterday announced the uh, removal of any, even if you get COVID, you don't have to quarantine anymore. Um, the only thing you will have to do as an arriving citizen from any other country is fill out what we call um, a PLF, a passenger locator form. It just asks for some basic details there. You have to declare you're fully vaccinated and um, telephone numbers, contact details. That is it. But the government is that, it says that is under review. And by Easter, there is a lot of hope in the market that that will be removed as well. And then you'll be able to just travel as normal in and out of the UK. So for here, and, and we don't have the uh, green pass. We've never had it, the COVID pass. We have it on our phones for when we go to Europe, but we do. you will not be asked to prove anything when you go into um, a restaurant or a, a cinema or anything. Um, I have to say that, life is returning to somewhat of a norm, which I don't want to jinx, but it really feels good here in London. And the tubes are busy, uh, theatres are open, so everything is, is really starting to, to feel good here. Fingers crossed. Uh, Louisa. 
Yes, uh, the QR code, we have this QR code is the so-called Green Pass, and in our case it's Super Green Pass. The Super Green Pass is uh, uh, given to the, the people that are fully vaccinated, meaning three doses of a vaccine or one when, uh, I mean, depending on the type of vaccine, or they had two doses and they recovered from the, um, the COVID. So they had COVID and they recovered. This green pass, super green pass, is needed to access uh, a restaurant, uh, theater, uh, uh, movie theater, um, a stadium. Uh, so all the, the, the swimming pools, uh, gym area, all the, uh, the area where uh, you can uh, um, stay in close contact with, uh, with other people. Without the green pass, you cannot go to the to these places, not even to eat a pizza, to the pizzeria, for just to give an example. To foreign people, this green pass, of course, is not required, requested, not for non-European citizens. So US uh, citizens do not have this green pass, but they have the CDC card. So the CDC card is enough, uh, is recognized. Of course, the test uh, needs to be done before boarding in the, in the plane and coming to, to Italy. No quarantine, as far as I know. Thanks so much, Luisa. I was uh, rapidly looking for the STEP program that is part of the Smart Traveler Enrollment that the State Department has. And if you do find that you're traveling internationally, I would recommend signing up for that country's STEP program. It's free, or if you wanna be tracking what's going on in a country, even if you're not traveling, it's a very good way of being kept up to speed on what the State Department is recommending as it relates to the country and has good links to the various different um, tools that you might need in country. Fred uh, also asks whether or not the Clear app will be something that might be sufficient in your markets. Um, any thoughts on that? Nope, Fred, it doesn't look like it. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions at the moment. We are all happy to remain online. Uh, if you would like to come on and talk to us, we will stop the recording. But first, I want to hand it back over to Bianca in case she has anything she'd like to wrap up with. Yes, thank you all for joining us today. And thank you to the U.S. Commercial Services team, Elizabeth Walsh, Stephen, Louisa, Karen, and Elizabeth Krauss. And I know we have Bernadette on the, um, online as well. So thank you so much. Uh, this recording will be up on our IANTA website, and you can access that through IANTA.org. Um, I will also be sending the recorded video um, this, of this webinar, as well as any resources that follow um, in the email before the end of this week. And if you would like to become a member, please do contact Gail Shehak. Her email is below or on the screen, and um, she is our Tribal Relations and Outreach Manager. Um, and you can also do so by visiting visiting our website at ienta.org. Again, we appreciate you being here today and um, we are going to stop the recording. And so if you have any questions, um, you can do so. Um, just go ahead and stay on the line and um,